weeks of silverware was on the line at the home of football. The fairy tale final that no one could have predicted whatever was going to happen. An historic footballing story was set to unfold at Wembley. I never thought I'd see the day when Bradford City was down at a cup final, no. Ten years of magic and to cap it with this, <laughs> unbelievable. I thought the only way I'd come back to Wembley was to come watch England play here, never mind Bradford City. It's been a dream for the Swansea fans and it's a dream for the both sets of fans today. I'd never imagined this possible. I'm gonna miss this for the world, it's fantastic. It'd be nice to win in now in a centenary year. Anything can happen, it's a cup final. It should be knocked out in every round. It's, you know, when they see your names on the cup, you just start believing it, you really do. It's taken 100 years for this. So, yeah, it's fantastic day. I haven't dared to dream just yet, but I think come kick-off, we can dream. So, who would have predicted that Bradford City from the fourth tier of English football would make it through to the final of the League Cup? And in doing so, dispose of three Premier League sides. Could they do it one last time, defy the odds and in the process beat one of the best footballing sides in the top flight? For Swansea, well, they'd never lifted a major domestic honour in their 100-year history. Would that change at Wembley? Commentary on the day comes from Alan Smith and Alan Parry. An emotional day for everyone connected with Bradford. Especially goalkeeper Matt Duke, who must have thought his career was over when he was diagnosed with cancer a few years ago. Rory McArdle's recovery from injury enables him to resume his partnership with Carl McHugh in the centre of defence. And Curtis Good has seen off all competition for the left-back role. In midfield, Gary Thompson gets the vote over Zavon Hines on the right. Otherwise, it's the same formation that did so well against Aston Villa in the semi-final. With big Jim Hansen, the man that Swansea have to worry about from set pieces. And now on to Swansea, Gerhard Tremel preferred to Michel Vaughan in goal, having played in every tie so far. With Spaniard Chico Flores missing through injury, Sung Young Ki moved from midfield to the centre of defence alongside Ashley Williams. And that means a change of role for Jonathan de Guzman, who plays slightly deeper than usual, allowing Michael Laudrup to pick two wingers, Nathan Dyer and Wayne Routledge, with Pablo Hernandez given a freer role behind their leading scorer and the bargain of the season, Miguel Michu. Bradford have a couple of speedy wingers on their bench in Kyle Reid and Zavon Hines, while Swansea include Itai Schechter and Luke Moore as their attacking options. So we're all set to go. The Capital One Cup Final gets underway. Can Bradford City complete their incredible journey? It has already seen them beat three teams from the Premier League. Or will it be Swansea fans singing their hymns and arias tonight? By the way, we will have a new name on the trophy. It was first introduced over 50 years ago. And of course, we do have extra time and penalties scheduled if needed. Let's see, uh, set up straight away. They're not going to press hard the pitch. They're not going to try and close down Swansea's defenders. They can have it in deeper areas. They just want to stay nice and compact. Keep the shape. Be hard to beat, to both clubs have been down in London for a couple of days, and both uh, teams went away for warm weather training. Bradford to Tenerife, Swansea to Dubai. Though the way the temperature is today, they'd have been better off acclimatizing in Siberia, I think. Dyer on the right hand side in a Swansea lineup that shows them with two out and out wingers, and Dyer gets possession again. Michio awaits the cross. First real test for the Bradford City defence. First corner of the game. Yeah, ominous signs, really. They were able to work the ball under no real pressure. And those wide lads for Swansea, Dyer and Routledge, they're going to be key, I think, with their pace, their ability to cut inside. Dyer was a member of the team that played here a couple of years ago in the championship playoff final against Reading. A real flying machine on that right hand side. And stronger than he looks. Swansea dominating the early possession, but Bradford were prepared for that. They expected it. Michu again awaits the cross. In behind him this time. 
No way out, it seems, for Bradford. And Ben Davis, who's had a remarkable first season in senior football, already a regular international for Chris Coleman's Welsh national team. A Swansea City fan, all his family here. And as Gerhard Tremel is called into action for the first time in the Swansea goal. It's Williams, who was rested for the uh, last league game for Swansea, the 5 0 defeat against Liverpool. He rarely misses a game. again Ashley Williams Michu's layoff gets it back again from Hernandez and Michu almost sneaks in behind the final defender Dyer to take on Curtis Good is it back for Angel Rangel Michu coming in and so too young Davis it's not about effort he gets a run on his man doesn't he he's got some momentum going at it He's always going to win that. I think Matt Duke had got his angle sorted. And since header on, finds Wells. And this looks promising. And some cross as well. That would really encourage Bradford. However, they've left gaps behind now, which Routledge is filling. And Dunley getting there quickly. He picks out Michu. Michu shot, turned away and in! Diane arrives to give Swansea City the lead at Wembley and Bradford's character will be put to the test yet again. I think that was the occasion, so they would have talked about this week, Bradford, when they get forward, when they commit men forward and when they lose the ball. It's the first time really it's happened. Look at the number of Bradford shirts in Swansea's half, and they do get caught by their pace. They really do. Although they do get some bodies around it in the end. Well, he just can't pave it away, can he, Matt Duke? He just can't get a strong enough arm onto it. It's not the most powerful shot for Michu, but it's accurate, and it forces a, a full stretch save from the keeper. Dyer's alert. He's alive to it. Pops up on the left to take on Derby. He blocked the cross, but at the expense of another corner. Half an hour gone in the Capital One Cup final, and it's the Premier League team who lead. Williams lurking at the back of the penalty area. Came right into his direction and struck back in by Britain. I'm not known for his goals. On Britain, he's had a really good season, I think. For sure, but just cutting across it a touch. Hernandez, Britain just to his right, but he's uh, ignored him. Here's Davis again. Williams launch long towards Dyer. He control that well. The Guzman, Davis, Hernandez, clever ball. Me too. respect shall we say shown to Swansea and I think maybe there was a case of it there because how much space did he have to turn when the ball's played into the Spaniard centre half does not get tight at all or is it Cole McHugh just can't get tight to him he comes across from his left and side of berth Ricardo's pushed in the touch you wouldn't expect him to be allowed that kind of time and space on the edge of the box He's more than talented enough to make them play as he does. Bit of luck maybe through the legs makes it more difficult for Matt Duke, but 
just before half time. That is a real blow for Bradford. And a great one for Swansea. And here's Dyer again. He's beaten the offside trap. Can he beat Duke and the defenders? Force wide. Back to Michu. The Guzman. And the hell shot blocked by Atkinson. The pressure really on Bradford City now. But it is, it's not always easy to make your superior class tell, but they've certainly done that swans in the way that they move the ball confidently and smoothly. Work the spaces. De Guzman, Dyer. Davis. Williams. Is key. Radlich, the man. He finds and a good save by Duke. The key just seemed to let that one run. Didn't play the ball. I don't know what he was doing there, the defender. To Guzman, onto Britain. Hernandez. Has made a run down the centre. Davis down the left. And that should take us to half time. Oh, really good ball from De Guzman. Side foot flat. There is the whistle. Nathan Dyer gave Swansea the perfect start. Arriving to snap up the loose ball. And Matthew could only push it into his direction. Then a really well worked Swansea goal with Pablo Hernandez and fellow Spaniard Miguel Michu involved. Michu the scorer. And Swansea have had a very, very good first half here. Bradford City, well, they've got problems. At the interval, it's Bradford City nil, Swansea City two. Well, Bradford's unforgettable League Cup campaign has featured several great comebacks. They needed extra time in the very first round to beat uh, Notts County. A late equaliser at Watford before they got the winner in stoppage time. They were 2-0 down to Burton Albion because coming back to win. And, of course, those ties against Wigan and Arsenal both went to penalty shootouts. But they will need the granddaddy of all comebacks to turn this one around. Had a good start anyway, straight on the front foot. Yeah, a difficult team talk for Phil Parkinson, wasn't it? He was just trying to encourage them, keep your chins up, keep going. And let's maybe just try and take one, two more chances, but this doesn't harm at all. Getting themselves a bit of a set piece, chance to launch it in. Williams with the clearance. I mean, an unnecessary foul, really, by Derby. Got another centre back on in Andrew Davis, a vocal centre back, big voice in the dressing room, real character. Was in the Middlesbrough squad that won this competition nine years ago, although he didn't play in the final. So I assume he will uh, fit in in the middle alongside McArdle with McHugh going to left back. Yeah, and it was a difficult first half for the Curtis Good, wasn't it? Uh, Carl McHugh will have his hands full if it uh, continues in the same vein down that right hand side for Swansea. Well, I guess it's a now or never 45 minutes this for Bradford City. They may as well give it their very best, give it their all. Have a real go. And see if they can get some kind of foothold in the game that their opponents have dominated. Davis gets his first touch of the ball and gives it away. It's been gifted back to Derby. In the middle, Nathan Doyle. Key intercepts. Dyer. If it carries on in this open fashion, we could be in for a very exciting, entertaining second half here. Michu lets it run again, and it goes back to Dyer on his left foot. Swansea City, Nathan Dyer grabs his second. Loudrup and Alan Curtis can afford to smile now. Why oh, can't they just? And Nathan Dyer can as well. He's been in unstoppable form. 
during this match. He's been excellent. And a lovely bit of interchange. Michu knows exactly where his man is behind Routledge. The simplest of the dummies. And that is a confident, accomplished finish, which effectively ends the tie. He hadn't already ended. Nathan Dyer has been superb out here today. They just haven't been able to handle it. And the worst possible start for the League Two side. Michu leads the celebrations. Rowlich. Back again to Dyer. There's Hernandez. Rowlich. Michu coming in near the penalty spot. Take it only as far as Britain. The Guzman. So there's a lot of Swansea players want to get on the score sheet here. Why wouldn't they? It's a Wembley final. It's uh, something to remember for all of them. And a chance for quite a few to get on the score sheet in this match. Don't any sympathy. Well, I don't suppose there's ever been uh, greater outsiders in a cup final than Bradford, which is not being disrespectful to them. It's the fact that there are some 70 places lower in the... Uh, Runs of the lead ladder, if you like, and their opponents. Here's Michu, it's a lovely ball into the middle, and that could be a penalty. And is. And I wonder who'll take it. Well, hopefully, it's not going to be red, but I'm afraid it is. I think Kevin Friend will have to say that he had no choice. But that is such a shame. Such a shame for Bradford, for the game, and of course for Matthew. Does he have no choice? I don't know. Just sometimes you think a little bit of discretion, a little bit of common sense, perhaps. I don't know whether referees are allowed that these days. Yes, of course, he's denied a, a goal scoring opportunity. But I don't know. Well, you've got to feel for him. He's been absolutely wonderful throughout this League Cup campaign, particularly in the two legs of the semi final against Aston Villa. Oh, he's got to give it. He's got to give it Nathan Dyer, hasn't he? Come oh, on. Yeah, absolutely. He doesn't normally take them, and De Guzman's got the ball. He, he's not having it. He's not having it. Well, they've got plenty of time to argue, because, of course, Bradford have got to get another goalkeeper on now. The 21-year-old John McLaughlin, the Scottish goalkeeper, whose only tie uh, in the campaign was in the second round against Watford, although he did keep uh, Matt Duke out for league games earlier in the season. And, of course, they're going to have to take... An outfield player off. And it's Wells, their striker. The argument still going on, incidentally, between De Guzman and Dyer, and one or two others getting involved now. Well, you don't want to make it an unseemly squabble, but uh, Jonathan De Guzman, I said all the Swansea lads want to get on the score sheet, and clearly De Guzman is one of them. He's not giving it up. He's the designated penalty taker but you don't really want to see a rare like that if he's not going to give it away he's not well i tell you what if jonathan de guzman doesn't score this questions will be asked and dyer is still furious well that he's not been given the chance to complete a hat -trick. i don't blame him i don't blame him when the game's won isn't it the game is won and there's a chance for him to make history to get a hat trick i mean de guzman doesn't know about the the facts but uh, he knows his teammates on a hat trick and uh, i think in hindsight he might feel he should have acted differently well when you're three nil up you wouldn't normally say there's pressure on a penalty taker but in a strange way there is here on the dutch international jonathan de guzman he wants his moment in the spotlight and he's got it but will he take it Very casual runner, but a very well placed penalty. 4 0 to Swansea City. They've now got two hands on the trophy. Never mind one. Is it over here, but, uh, <laughs> the fact is, it's a goal. They're just talking about who was given the penalty duties. Takes it confidently enough.
But it looks as though the argument has been settled. And they kissed and made up as well. Dyer wins it back anyway. Much better to get a hat-trick with your third goal coming from open play than the penalty spot. It's going to be a long old half an hour for Bradford, isn't it? Because fitness comes into question as well, the superior superior fitness of the Premier League side with their extra resources, the sports science side of the team, the sharp upfitter that can go longer. As the game wears on, those Bradford lads are going to get increasingly tight. Done a lot of chasing out there today. One more goal, of course, and Swansea will have created a record for the final. No team has ever won it by five goals. Michu. Atkinson intercepts, but there's nowhere to go as Michu robs him again. And gets it back. And was very close to scoring that fifth. Well, it's as silky and as sweet as you like some of this interplay from Swansea. Some superb football we've seen out here today. Oh, how close is that? Just a short back lift again through the legs of the defender. And they're certainly singing hymns and arias now, all right. Control he has. And proves it once more. Dazzling footwork to earn a corner. And a tie in with Bradford at the moment. The superior technicians of Swansea. McHugh getting twisted into knots there. There he is again, Hernandez. Good cross. Oh, there were so many uh, options there. It was Williams who had the touch and knows he probably should have scored the skipper. Yeah, I don't think he thought it was actually come his way, that it would come as far as it did, and he couldn't shift his feet quickly enough. Come off his knee in the end. But Hernandez, who created that opportunity, is uh, a perfect example of the difference in stature between these two clubs. He was Swansea's record by for five and a half million pounds. The most costly player in the Bradford squad, Michael Nelson, cost just £50,000, and he's not even playing today. What a sight this is, though, the Bradford fans are. Fantastic. Both sets of fans have enjoyed their day, clearly them more than the Bradford supporters. But I think they're applauding the opposition supporters for their loyalty and their enthusiasm, even though their team are, well, at the moment, hopelessly out of depth. I imagine Bradford would be a ghost town today, wouldn't you? The streets will be deserted. Well, they know how to sing in Wales, and Swansea and Cardiff and a couple of others are proving they know how to play football as well. Despite the one-natured, one-sided nature of this contest, it's still a fantastic occasion, isn't it? Still, and that's thanks to the fans as much as anything. Davis. It's brushed aside. Back to Ashley Williams. Guzman takes over. Swept that wide. Around hell. Kind of wins it back, then gives it away just as quickly, and that's a corner to Swansea. I think as a defender, they put so much doubt in your mind, those Swansea lads going forward because they don't know whether to stick or twist to get tight or stand off. Whatever they're doing, it's not working. There's Dyer, still looking for that third goal. 
Swansea have four, and they scored that many, of course, on their previous visit here in the uh, championship playoff final against Reading, who got two that day. That was a terrific game as well. Here's Dyer again. He's so anxious to get that third goal. Uh, he's sort of lost concentration. Winger, born in the Ivory Coast, but a uh, full international for Belgium, Lamar. Oh, would you believe it? <laughs> Nathan Dyer is not going to make history as the first player to score a hat-trick in a League Cup final. <laughs> I'm a little surprised Michael Audrup could have afforded to have left him on. But uh, he's not thinking about personal gain, the manager. He's thinking about his team as a whole, seeing the job through. Two goals, not a bad uh, day's work, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's, still, he's still complaining about the penalty, I'm sure.